Well, on our rotation, we do two years of wheat, then double crop soybeans, and two years of milo soybeans back into wheat. So we have one year of wheat that is coming right after soybeans, and you know you have one yield goal for that. And then your second year of wheat, that's when you can push it a little bit harder. You typically have more moisture reserved in the ground, and that's what we're standing in out here. You know, last year, this year and last year are quite a bit different. Last year, we were coming off of a crop failure on our double cropped wheat, stuff we put in after soybeans. And then we had all the nutrients left over that we'd applied to that crop. And this year, we're following a, you know, a 60 bushel type uh, double crop wheat crop. And it's just different. There's more residue out here. There's more disease pressure. And you just have to understand that's coming. You have to understand that you're probably going to need a little bit more nitrogen uh, to either help break down the straw that's already out here or to feed the next crop. And as I said, disease management is key. So at least two shots of fungicide in the spring. We experimented with doing some in the fall out here too. We don't know what it's going to do yet. We'll know when we harvest if we saw any bump or anything. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we are we're sitting in Crete silt loam right now. Typically, we'll have about 25 parts per million to 30 parts per million of phosphorus that's already out here. We'll fertilize with 90 pounds of mes and at least 100 pounds of nitrogen, whether that's with UAN or urea. Uh, this field's probably a little bit more this year, maybe 130 pounds of nitrogen total. A lot of this is assuming that you have your pH in good shape. Our target is 6.0 here, and that's a happy medium between uh, nutrient availability and being able to get rid of your herbicides in a timely manner. As we're in a crop rotation, we can't have stuff carrying over too long. So 6.0 is a low enough pH to get rid of some of those herbicides that we don't stick in, want sticking around forever. goal with grid sampling is to figure out where our nutrient levels are in our field and lime is a big one we're this field as well well as most fields in McPherson County especially eastern McPherson County are very acidic so we found that we are anywhere from 4.9 up to 5.9 you know and, and like I say our target six six is a sweet spot where you don't have to dump just tons and tons of lime on uh, but that's what we've invested in and it's starting to pay back. We were showing that our, our FOSS levels were building in the soil, and that's a pretty good indicator that your nutrients aren't totally available to your plants. So that's liming's been a big part of this. What we'll do is we'll come back again here in the next year or two and grid sample again, see where we're at, make a new prescription for lime if there is a need for, for some. We, we test in the top five inches of the soil. Um, probably the top two is where it's really important I mean, that has to do with how deep we plant. You know, you don't, you want to go deeper than shallower and no-till, and part of it is is that top, you know, half inch can be a little bit gnarly. So you get below that, 